From the Riffs! Hey, welcome back to From the Riffs. I'm Big Will Johnson, and behind the camera, Carmen Blair. And I'm sitting here today at the Palladium Open House, day two, with uh, Josh Sinsipa, another Palladium writer, and we're going to get to know him a little better and get his insights on what it's like to work at Palladium and how to break into the biz. So uh, without further ado, man, tell us a little more about yourself. Well, as you said, my name is Josh Sinsipa, 27 years old from Saugerties, New York. Uh, work in the health insurance industry, but that's not really important. Uh, <laughs> Might be if you're and, in riffs. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> got, but got my start in Palladium about, I think it was around 2005. Okay. First semester of college. All right. Yeah. And um, what made you want to be a writer? What made you want to you know, get into the business? Were you a role player beforehand? or? Well, not to sound cheesy, but ever since I was seven years old, like actually writing for Palladium was one of my goals. Like cool. I grew up playing the game. Right. Okay. So... It's, it's kind of been a lifelong ambition that I uh, actually was able to achieve when I was like 20, 21. Okay. So, yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, that's great. I mean, that's not cheesy. That's, you know, that means you had a goal. You found, you found your way to it. That's awesome. So, um, what titles have you worked on since being picked up by Palladium? Well, aside from my first uh, publication by Palladium was in the Rifter for uh, Rifter 30. Then I was, uh, as well as in Rifter 33, and a few more after that. Did several DBs and DBs North America, I think about 10. Okay. And then uh, my latest title was uh, Shemarian Nation a few years ago. Oh, very cool. All right. And uh, what would you say, uh, what's your favorite genre to write in? Or, uh, you know, if it's just wrist stuff, then is that your favorite? Your, what's your favorite area to write in for uh, at Palladium? I seem to prefer riffs. Uh, Beyond the Supernatural really appeals to me. I like the uh, modern horror aspect, how you can suspend the disbelief. Oh, okay. and, like, even though you're talking about ghosts and monsters, it's very rooted in our real world. Right, so it's something that could actually yeah. happen to somebody, so it's got it's got that cool edge to it. Yeah. I know uh, Steve Dobbs was talking about that too. You can, find, you can find those scenarios in your backyard, so to speak. Yeah, and I've always been pretty much a laid-back person, mm -hmm. so I'll take inspiration whenever you know it strikes the anvil. Right. Yeah. I hear you. So. All right. So yeah. Actually, I was going to bring you to my next question. Like, what really inspires you? Like, you know, uh, do what do you what do your influences come from? Um, well, oddly enough, uh, actually, literature and music, okay. which I know is not the common thing. Usually, you would expect comic books and movies, which I love those as well. You know, we're finding more and more that music is definitely a common thread, even with the artists to uh, here playing it too. So, yeah, man. So. <laughs> So, okay, so what kind of music? Like, what, do you, what well, are you listening to when you're working? I uh, actually have a very diverse taste in music. It's almost schizophrenic in a way. <laughs> but a uh, huge Bob Dylan fan. As long as you don't dance, schizophrenic, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, but lots and lots of types of music. And when I'm working, I try to listen to music that has, you know, not so much a. Not so lyrical content, but you know more right. instrumental music. Right, and that seems to be a very common thread amongst the writers. They're, they're like, you know, I can't focus if there's lyrics involved. So, like when I was working on uh, Riff's Dark Woods, one of the upcoming books, I listened to uh, Night on Bald Mountain from uh, Disney's Fantasia, right. over and over and over again. Very really? thematic. Worked pretty well, actually. Oh, okay. I could, I could definitely see that. All right. Well. Um, Another question we've been asking people is about uh, what's the what's your working process? Are you a daytime guy? Are you a nighttime guy? Are you very uh, meticulous as far as your planning and consideration, or do you just kind of go in, wing it, and work it any time you can? Well, lately it's been any time I can, but preferably okay. it would be you know the nighttime process. Right. Like it's I wish it didn't, but you know. Uh, inspiration and the ability to actually just you know write on a tear doesn't really occur for me until like one or two in the morning when you're probably wanting to get to sleep about that time. Right, like, but if you had if you had your way, you'd be a nighttime guy then. If I had my way, I'd be able to I'd be able to do it like right after uh, my day job. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> but uh, you, you're very in this world. You don't usually have your way. Right, exactly. All right. So, uh, would you have any advice for any would-be writers out there? Well. Don't doubt yourself. That's really the best advice. 
And as for writer for Palladium and specifically, uh, you know, try the Rifter first. That's how I broke in. That's how most of the freelancers broke yeah, in. I think we'll just start calling, at least uh, on From the Rest, we'll just start calling the Rifter like Palladium Boot Camp. You know, if you can make it to the Rifter, then eventually you're you're probably going to find yourself working on a title, you know, if you're lucky. So I think, yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Carmen. I got a couple questions for you. Since uh, you're primarily a Rifts writer, and we don't have a lot of guys who have told that, um, and Rifts is like the, the headline uh, title, you know, flagship for Palladium. You want to give us an idea of like what your favorite parts are in Rifts? You know, like where do you like to adventure? What do you want to write about in Rifts? What do you have upcoming for Rifts? You know. Well, I my favorite part personally has always been you know power armor. In a way, they're kind of like to me they're the they're the hot rod men of Rifts. You know, right. they're like. They're working on their machines. They're like, if if I had my way, they'd all be like rolling up their sleeves, listening to the classic rock. <laughs> but uh, as for writing, for whatever reason, I seem to like veer more towards you know, almost pigeonholing myself in, you know, the dark arts, okay. necromancy. And don't want to sound like I'm a goth or anything. Not like there's anything wrong with that. But uh, nice save. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's always a witchcraft, necromancy. Well, I mean, just put it bluntly, that stuff's just. Damn it's, cool to me. It is. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, and if you're going to experiment with it, you should probably do it in role playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, cool. Uh, so what? What is it? What is it in uh, riffs that you're going to write that involves that? Because um, we haven't seen a lot of that in the books so far. Yeah. Uh, Darkwoods, for example, which would be a. Uh, part of the uh, trilogy for uh, Rift's Deep South, uh, Delta Blues, Darkwoods, and uh, Voodoo in the Spirit World. Darkwoods is a uh, place on Rift's Earth where the kingdoms of magic, basically, they send their exiles to. There's okay. nothing that's going to keep them there. It's, uh, you know, what used to be Alabama on Rift's Earth. But there, you know, the outcasts get sent. The weird alien forms of magic get practiced. You know, that's where you're going to send your necromancers, you know, your witches. Your undesirables. Exactly. Them. So is it is the um, these new books you're working on, or are these titles that are already finished? They're already finished. I'm doing a uh, another uh, quick edit of the uh, Delta Blues for Kevin, okay. uh, implementing the things we discussed last year at the Creators Conference. Right. Obviously, I can't say what those things were, but uh, the techniques and things we <laughs> we've worked well, on. You know, we're yeah. always hoping for little tidbits. At least I know these guys are out there, so yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> uh, you can you can say a little bit of it. You're not gonna get in trouble. Well, you know, basically uh, add a little more crunch, and with uh, magic and you know really thematic set settings, that's really important because good settings fine. Good good settings great. You know, yeah, sets the mood, sets the table, whichever way you want to put it. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, players, GMs, everybody, they're gonna want their uh, and don't mean this in any uh, dismissive way either. Right. They're going to want their toys to play with. Of course. And I'm going to want, I want my toys to play with, too. Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, um, the only other question I was going to ask you is, are you, are you, uh, well, like, are you have, do you have any training as a writer? Or did you go to school for writing? Did you take write, writing classes? Or are you kind of the, just the guy who picked up a pad and paper and had some good ideas and eventually translated that to a keyboard? Well, I always did good in, say, like, English classes in high school. Okay. But I never really, like, uh, considered that I would uh, go into a career for writing, except for, say, Palladium. Right. So really it's, you know, it's scenario two. It's been just a series of happy accidents. Okay. Uh, all right, cool, very cool. Well, Mr. Sinsapa, it has been a pleasure. Same. And, uh, hey, I hope you enjoyed the open house as much as the rest of us have. Uh, if, you, if you guys can't hear it, you maybe will, maybe you won't. It's really loud out there with people just a buzz of whatever they're doing. And uh, this is Big Will, Carmen Belair, and Justin Safa. And this is from the Riffs. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>